Welcome to the demo of Net Ghost. This is a crime-driven visual novel with a lot of mystery, twists, turns, and intriguing storyline. Let's see what this game offers to the player, but also as well, just environmentally. Chapter 1, Ladders and Snakes. Hey, hear you. Yes, I'm talking to you, whoever you are. You talking to me? Fourth wall breakage already? This is my first line, it's not even talking about the story, it's talking about the player. How dare it, I want my money, but I'm just kidding. <laughs> my name is Ian Newfield. I live at 37 Allen Street, Palmetto Heights, Tri-State, 86572, and I'm a, a cyber security engineer at Daikin Industries. But you may already know that, if you found this recording. I didn't actually. In the message that follows, I will speak the truth, and nothing but the truth. That's what we all want people to know about, the truth. Different perceptions of the truth itself. Follow on. This is not an admission of guilt. My mind is clear and my faculties are sound. I'm clean of drugs and I'm not depressed, nor am I suicidal or under psychological pressure. I do not own nor do I have the license to own my, any firearms, nor do I know how to use them. Okay. This is supposed to be like a introduction of sorts, so you try to clear of any kind of suspicions of you. A week ago, a chunk of our encrypted data at Daikin Industries was leaked. Data crucial to a highly classified project that may have an effect on world affairs. Several corporate level interest parties and other entities have stakes in this, so the situation is understandably tense. But as per my job description, I am not qualified to know the details of a project. I just make sure it does not fall into the wrong hands. Yeah, that is definitely the best way to go about it when it comes to leaked data is not the fact that it's just been leaked, but it falls into the hands that would use it for evil. I have copies of logs and files stored in my workplace, here, in my house, and in other locations that I'm not going to disclose, set to be uploaded online in the event of my death, right? All of it is data that clears me, for leaks of info or any wrongdoing, really, but there won't be any of that, because there's no such thing as me being doing something as, which is a wrongdoing. Anyways, any encryption I code is airtight. On a closed network. Always. I know it wasn't me who leaked this information. So it has to be someone from the office where I work. Someone who exploited their access privileges to find easy ways around the security I and fellow employees maintain. I've been tasked by my boss, Mr. Bula, CEO of Daikin Industries, with finding out who the thief who this rogue employee is. And that's what I'll do my best to do. This is for my sister Vevi. If it comes to you ever watching this, it means things have gone badly. For me, I'm sorry. Take, take care. A week ago. Okay, doing some time travel shenanigans and stuff like that, going back in time. The sun bore down to the back of my neck mercilessly. My whole body was sweating the summer heat. Can I just say something? Working next to a coffee shop is fantastic. I wish right then that I could get out of this tight suit that I have to wear every day in my job as per the company policy. I look around me at the busy sidewalk. People were headed to work at this time of the day. All with a burden of a blazing sun on their necks, just like me. Yet they pressed on. So did I. Daikin Industries, an information technology company and a small branch of a larger international umbrella corporation, significant in its own way, yet that were known or acknowledged by its associates of the world, like a shadow company, shadow secretary, something, I don't know, simple employees don't get to see the clients, and I'm never told what it is that I'm working to protect, that's fine by me. It means my job as a cybersecurity engineer there is as quiet as can be. Closed network, no threats, no drugs to deal with. I come in contact with some corporate level gems, 
the vessel was fine at the end of the day, somehow, some way. I get paid, and there's a condition in the office. Mm-hmm. Is that the main reason why we go here? It's because of the air conditioning. Especially in the summer months, I'll sit on my desk chair, coffee at the ready next to my mouse. Typing. I wasn't sure how much time has passed since I began, but I wasn't the kind to keep track of time. For me, work was finished when work was finished, not when the time came. Some of us, it's the other way around, we always look at, look at the time to see when the scheduled amount of time is finished. I felt at home on this desk. I've been doing this for so long that I've gotten used to all the sounds around me, the people around me, fellow employees, fade into the background, and it was as if I was alone. Just me, my desk, and my computer. The endless rows of letters and numbers, the midi cure coffee on the plastic cup from the cafe across the street, even the keyboard that felt chunk clunky when compared to the one I had at home, okay. As I typed, I couldn't help it. My consciousness drifted off, and I found myself being very aware of my circumstances. My life. Every day is the same. My job. Simple for me. I'm on my desktop, typing encrypted words and numbers for hours upon hours. Sometimes I eat myself when I'm bored. I don't usually stop or take breaks, and often I work overtime. I get sucked in. The screen draws me in. Its spell keeps me there until very late at night or sometimes. Coding is a world of perfect square logic. <laughs> you call that perfect logic for goodness sakes, coding for goodness sakes. A system of unrelenting laws and rules in which I'm the absolute master. What I type goes. I give a command and action happens. A leads to B, and B leads to C, and so on. I wish dealing with my co-workers was just as straightforward. Who are your co-workers, by the way? I stop taking... So, stop typing, I mean. Take a sip of my coffee, and glance around the office. People are more complicated. A leads to Z with some of them. They know nothing of reason. I try to avoid these. Others, they know of reason, and they're just stubborn. Daru vibes and others they use reason when it suits them and don't when it doesn't suit them that's a peculiar combination McKeezy inspired? but people are not all bad I know some of them have a desire to do well fair and with no shenanigans I work best with such types hmm is used to read people when they're off guard just doing their thing every detail on their person from their clothes to the way they talk says something about them, you just have to know how to interpret it. Either way, most of them in this office don't have secrets from me, and I mean that literally. Since I've happened upon their work email passwords, I try not to peek, but you know, curiosity gets the best of me sometimes. I guess it's my dirty little secret. It's my dirty little secret. And it's nothing compared to some of the other dirty little secrets I've found. So, I managed to sleep soundly at night, knowing their dirty little secret. I took another sip of my coffee and stood staring blankly at the code on my screen. I was tired as hell, and I was so very often tired as hell. I felt, it felt like sleep was never enough. For a moment, I began missing the days of school, and I could get as much sleep as I liked. But in this life, and this kind of job, it wasn't going to happen. My thoughts were interrupted when I noticed someone was standing next to my desk, casting a shadow over me. I turned my head around and looked at the guy wearily. And who would that guy be? Hey. Ah, oh, hello there. Hey, Ian. The large man called out. <laughs> that was Mike Millen. Another coder working for the company. He was the type of guy who writes anonymous rants about politics on Five Net. Uh, is that supposed to be like 4chan or something? And spends his weekends inside watching the Net, sorry, Neckbeard Squad podcast on YouTube religiously. <laughs> Can't blame him though. I watch that podcast too sometimes. Well, there's a master of the uh, Daikon server. I had the password of Mike's work email, and I'd taken a glance at his inbox before. He used the same email for his account on YouTube, which led me to find emails that pointed to lengthy, mostly pointless arguments he likes to have in the comments of videos. I checked them every once in a while to amuse myself. 
Oh dear, my job was the crypt outside material brought in by clients. Write a first stage sort of temporary shell of protection, then pass the material on to me. A job harder than most people in this company. Judging from the kind of top secret things that were brought into our care, he was a one of a kind coder. Which would explain why he got away with wearing whatever kind of clothes at work he plays instead of following the dress code. Hey Amen. Got anything for me? Not this time, he said. Something's come up. I could tell he wasn't joking, so I turned my chair to face him. What is it? He paused for a bit, giving me a look I already saw from him. Um, Bola's asked to see you. Better go talk to him. Is it the headman's axe? Should I start looking for a new gig? <laughs> I was half joking, but seeing him not laugh made me concerned as well. He left without a word. Mike could be awkward at times. I got up from my office desk. The shirt beneath my suit's jacket stuck on my chest tightly, and I started to sweat again, despite the coolness of the air conditioning. This could be could very well be my last day in the office. I doubt it. My thoughts started racing. Where would I go now? What would I do? As I tread through the floors of the offices, my mind, on its own, went back to my work. I'd have done anything wrong or out of the ordinary. My code was so sound and solid. I made sure it was. Was I just not needed here anymore? That could not be it either. I thought as I walked into the elevator. I pressed the button, the doors closed. I had been a model employee. Mr. Boer himself had hinted so. But it follows that he wouldn't fire me just like this. At least he would maybe give me a warning. I was having these thoughts, even though I didn't even know if anything had truly gone wrong or what it was that my boss wants to talk about. Perhaps I was getting ahead of myself. The elevator came to a halt, but it wasn't my floor. The doors opened, and of all the people that could enter, the person least likely to be working in this office came in. Here, man. Ken said as soon as he saw me, all happy like. I composed myself and tried not to show my discomfort at his presence. So this guy is going to be a bit of a bully then, I imagine. Or a bit of a threat. Well, he could be the one that stole the data. Or leaked the data. He pressed a button to, for the top floor even though I'd already pressed it. Ken was here for more than six months, yet the office folk still thought he was the new guy. If I had a say in it, he would be long gone by now. With his attitude, I wouldn't even hire him to begin with, in fact. He never respected the job's dress code. Some days he didn't show up to work at all, and looked half the type to be selling watches in some filthy corner downtown, half like the usual Silicon Valley genius that is all too happy to sell your search history and email address for a quick buck. I couldn't decide which one it was when I first saw him, and I couldn't decide now. I know he wasn't exactly professional, since he spent almost all of his time on Google looking for other people's code rather than making his own. In hindsight, even professionals do that quite a lot, but he didn't strike me as a professional at any rate. What's good? Ken asked me with an unusual glee. Not much, I guess. What are you so happy about? You up for a promotion? I say with a dry, tired smile. <laughs> nah, just business is good, that's all. He was a simple codo, at least. Well, supposed to be. It was strange to hear him call his job business, but I had a feeling he was referring to something altogether different. Yeah, what type of business? I couldn't help myself asking. The type of business was none of your business, he said defensively. As I shrugged, he looked at his look and tone almost proved my suspicions. All right, all right, I said, backing off. <sighs> Ken said in a low voice. Low voice and exited the elevator. I shook my head and followed him out. I was thankful that I saw him go the other way that I needed to go. Seconds later, I stopped in outside, outside the door to Mr. Boer's office and braced myself before I knocked. I wished with all my strength that all was well and good, and my, uh, sorry, for my sake and the sake of my sister who depended on me. Come in. I heard my boss's muffled voice from behind the door. With his permission, I stepped into the CEO's office. We were high above the ground level, so high in fact that all anyone could see through the window at first glance were the skyscrapers of Tri-State, a nice view for the top dog of this company to enjoy, to be sure. Okay, who do you give me vibes of? That 
antagonist in Steins Gate, I imagine, but one that killed McKeezy and, well, indirectly killed McKeezy and then stole her work for his own benefits. I spotted Mr. Boer next to his desk. He was pacing around, talking to his earpiece. He looked at me for a second as to acknowledge me briefly and then walked away, continuing on with his conversation. I wondered if he was on the phone with his girlfriend or his wife. I knew Mr. Burla was married because he was wearing a ring, and that he was a cheater because he wasn't always wearing it. And of course, because he used to work. He used his working mode to secretly talk to his side lady. But I try not to let my personal opinion of him interfere with my work, like with much of anybody else in the office. I wasn't exactly a saint either anyway. Yeah, looking up dirty little secrets of other people. <laughs> I thought it best to be discreet, so I just closed the door behind me and stayed put. He was far enough away from me so I could not hear what he was saying, but the tone of the conversation seemed urgent, and he was making wide gestures as he walked around as if he wished to coerce the person on the other end of the line. I knew then it was one of our clients. I couldn't hear much of what was said, fixed in my tie. I remained quiet until he was done. Newfield, he called out before even shutting down the call. Hello, I said, somewhat awkwardly, not knowing when, what awaited. We have a major crisis on our hands, Mr. Brewer said. I knew right away that he meant it. What is it, sir? Can I help? Can you? Mr. Brewer asked. He seems displeased, irate even. A portion of our precious code was leaked. Someone posted it online anonymously. Code from a year ago, so not our oldest segment or the latest. I felt my tie choking me, me all of a sudden. No way, impossible! I thought, and I'm not one to use that word lightly. I had been working on its encryption on a closed network day and night for years. Can't be, I finally said, my brow sweating. My shirt sticking to my chest. We've done five times the amount of what can be done about the product security with the resources and time provided, as I've documented in my report. What we're looking at, uh, looking after is more fortified than certain bank vaults, if you can believe that, sir. I was added that the product, whatever it was, better be worth the amount of money tossed into its security, if it's so heavily guarded, but that wasn't something to share with your boss, as long as the hand kept feeding right. I know, Mr. Broder shouted. I know. He paused and sighed, we found components of it on the dark web. Whoever did this decrypted the thing as well. Decrypted it? I said dubiously, in a harsh tone. All of its strata? Yeah, all of its layers and what you have. Which means they've been at it for some time. Listen, Newfield. Don't look for it. Forget the data is available out there. And our clients will do the rest. Make sure it's wiped clean of any of the size it appears in. They're already frothing at the mouth over the leak. If we had an employee of ours have a look over there and learn something they shouldn't, heads would roll. In fact, I'm surprised heads haven't rolled already. I try to calm myself and think of ways that this could have happened. I cover my mouth with my hand glancing out the window, thinking after collecting my thoughts, I spoke. Sir, if we were hacked, I would know it in an instant, but I was never aware of anything like it. Everything was fine when I left my desk a few minutes ago. My boss nodded seriously. I know. He said yet again. He must have reached the same conclusion I was about to reach. Which means... Hmm... I speculated. We weren't hacked. And somebody got to it from the inside. I know this company's full of snakes, so that's no surprise. And there's heat all over our product, Mr. Bulos said. Then ordered me in a brisk manner. Your task was security, so go do your job, and let me be clear. I don't go. I'm sorry, I don't care how you do it or what methods you use. Just find out. Quite flexible, isn't this guy? I stopped to think of the implications of this. Mister Bull looks deplete, looks displeased when he noticed my hesitation. Do I have to spell it out? He rasped. Hack them if you have to. I give him a tentative look. It wasn't like I'd never hacked anyone before, but only when I knew it was completely safe and that no one would be harmed in the process. But this whole ordeal reeked of legal trouble. I thought I should consider other options first, but I knew it wouldn't change a thing with Mr. Buller. I assume we can't get the police involved? 
What are you, nuts? We tell the police, our clients learn of it, and we're done. Done! No, this has to be solved internally. Our company's reputation depends on it. Right. Of course, sir. I had no choice but to agree. I will find them. I promised, as the pride of my work depends on it. A quick moment of silence followed, and it looks like the conversation was done. I nearly headed out of the door just then, relieved that I walk out of this office still with my job, but a thought that occurred to me made me stop and turn to face my boss. Sir, how come you didn't think it was me? He returned to his desk and he paused and looked at me. You? He said incredulously. You don't have the guts for it. Thanks, Mr. Brawler. That's actually comforting. I found myself thinking as I turned to leave, at least he doesn't think it was me. And Newfield. The boss said, don't tell a living soul about anything we talked about. Yes, boss. Thank you, boss. I'll sit on my desk sweating hot on the inside but cold on the outside thanks to the air conditioning. An awful feeling, but another uglier feeling nested inside me. Anxiety. When I returned to my computer, I almost opened the turnip browser, wanting to take a small peek at the leaks on the dark web, but my other concerns pre prevailed for now, and I would be an award-winning idiot if I did this at work. Besides, I had to take safe safety measures before doing anything else. The first thing I did was plaster a sticky note blackened with permanent marker on my webcam, and then turn down the computer's mic, mic right after. If this was an inside job, I was not about to risk being spied on. I slowly started to check every hardware piece on my office computer. The hard drives were still plugged in. Every cable was connected to the right place. No suspicious disks in the drive. No USB sticks or anything that wasn't put there by myself. I wonder if there's some way to be able to track, like, what external devices have been plugged into the PC, when and where. Like, it has a time, it has a date on it, it has a user on it as well. Alright, time to check for software. Logging seems normal. Code access times. Ordinary. The code was accessed at night sometimes, but I knew that was me. I often overstayed in our office to work. At certain days, very late, late even. I did a quick search for bugs that could have caused an opening. Nothing came up. With my computer's hardware and software checked and secured, and my fruitless bug search done, I rationalized it wasn't my skill as a coder that was at fault. If somebody knew the password to my work computer, this computer right in front of me, and the server room of the building, then theoretically with the right knowledge, they could get their hands on the project manually and copy it. How they decrypted past that point was a different question, so I chose not to think about it for a moment. The boss. I pepped above my computer and I saw Mike work was I walking towards my desk. Ian, you're back, Mike said. He sounded hopeful. Yeah, I'm back, I said lying back on my I said lying back on my chair comfortably, so did you get chewed on? I could feel more questions coming up. I had to, took, I had to cook some lie about what meant, went on, sorry, because I wasn't supposed to speak to anyone about my talk with the boss. Nah, I said, everything is fine. Everything is fine? Mike said doubtfully. Brood was furious earlier. Well, couldn't tell you why, I said. My sarcasm was so carefully veiled it went over Mike's head. Did he mention my name? No, he said, your job is safe. Don't worry about it. Just go back to work. Wow. Judging by his look, he might have suspected that I wasn't being truthful, but he didn't say much else and left for his desk. I feel like at some point there needs to be a break where you need to tell the truth. But now is not that time. Let's have a save just for a moment. Who was it? Probably uh, the guy that you saw in the elevator. Or the boss itself. Mr. Buller could have done it. An inside job. The question bothered me ever since I left the boss's office. I put my mind to work. Whoever it was, they must have had considerable computer skills, a good reason to hang around in the building, and possibly knowledge of the work schedule of everyone in the company. That would let them know when it was time to strike, and if it was a clean inside job, they could do it within the time span of a few hours. The nostalgic feeling of being back at work I had earlier, before the talk with my boss, had given way to a deep-seated anxiety. 
My suspicions first turned to the new guy, Ken. The guy was far from clean, of course. He was using Keylog as another pre-made hacking software that he downloaded online to hack people he knew, as I found out from his emails. From which emails I inferred he was into the drug trade, judging by online conversation with his buddies where some bizarre sentences like, Do you have a uh do you have the cats I asked for and how much of how much of the baskets were used all the time? An all-time classic. The coded language he and his lot were using was more transparent than they thought. But ultimately their extra legal act Adventures were no concern of mine, as he himself points out earlier. I had a good idea how a person like that could land a job in a place such as this. His dad was a lawyer in a corporate level f law firm, a firm whose interests aligned with those of Daikin Industries, to be sure, and I had no doubt in my mind that the guy was here to freeload and make some fast cash by cutting corners. I want to put it past him to have his way with Daikin Industries products if he got the chance. People like this, people with this kind of ideology need to be eradicated. Not the person, but the ideology that they hold so dearly. But did he have the skill to pull it off? Was he competent enough? Smart enough? No, by my estimation. But I wasn't going to rule him out just like that. There's more then meets the eye always. Hmm. Then there was Hope of the accounting department. I didn't know anybody in the office who could match her professional diligence or her cunning ambition, but she was smart about the latter. I know she covered in the CEO's chair for years now, and that's where it looked like she was headed. Does it give you vibes of Nikizi Karushi from Steins Gate? Certainly does for me. Inspiration, yes. She bowed her head and jumped when she was ordered by Mr. Buller, but she loved to micromanage employees like me who had nothing to do with, a depart with her department. It's possible she has OCD. She had a habit of getting irate if even a small detail of what she's working on is off. But she was timid at heart. She backed off from open conversations as I observed when she and her apparent unlikely rival, the janitor, Andre, had an argument about how to mop the floor properly, or something. I don't really care enough to stay and listen. If she was behind the league, she wasn't doing it for money. She would do it to get ahead. That's all she cared about, as far as I knew. And Andre was a janitor of a building. Had been for at least three or four years. Ken likes to call him an old geezer. Andre did look old. But he wasn't older than 40, exactly. I mean, he's broadly as well, so you don't want to mess with him. I didn't thought much of him before, as his time at work was as uneventful as one could imagine. He came by, picked up his tools, cleaned the place up, chatted with other employees during work, and left after his eight hours were up. But after today's talk with my boss, I had the feeling Andre's ordinary grey eyes knew more than they let on. Did he have the skills to pull us off? I had no idea. In truth, I didn't know much of anything about him. All I knew was that he was good at his job, and that he was coming from across the pond. Europe, maybe. And Mike. You definitely had the skills to pay it off, don't you think? But what if it was Mike? Just the thought made my chest swell with stress. Mike was more capable to do something like this than any others I considered so far. He was a knowledgeable coder. He knew my work schedule. He knew his way around way around the server room, and he had a hand in the encryption, which would mean he had a head start on decrypting the thing. Those facts alone would not convince me that he was worthy of suspicion. Every coder in this office had the aforementioned qualities and abilities, but Mike stood out from the rest. It wasn't common knowledge around the office, more like a rumor, that Mike had hacked Daikin before he was hired. <laughs> Definitely giving Daru energy. In fact, this was the reason he was hired to begin with. It was a classic story in our field of work. Skilled coders probing for exploits and holes in the c code of a company's website or product. Then send the owners their findings for reward, or in this case, a position in a company for their useful skills. I knew the truth from one of Mike's work emails that I read when I got access to his messages. In Mola's words, when talking to Mike, he 
hadn't forgotten the liberties you took before joining. What I didn't know about this little story is what it was exactly that Mike had hacked. Was it my code? There was a good chance it was, and that frightened me. Hmm. I'm definitely still suspicious of a guy on the left. Or it wasn't Mike at all, or any of the people I mentioned. And it was one of the others who work in this office. I think Mr. Bull is definitely behind it. There are people with there are people with daily access in this building who I've never interacted with. That was going to complicate my search tenfold. My thoughts were scattered all over the place. Writing down what made me suspicious about each of those people would help, but doing so would be dangerous. What if someone saw the writings, or saw me writing them? I had to return home, collect my thoughts, and take care that I stored copies of the work logs at home. I glanced at my watch to see if it was past three. Time flew by and I didn't even know how. Usually I'd be starving by this hour, but I didn't feel like having anything to eat after today's events. I just resolved to go home as quickly as possible. I closed the door behind me as I rushed into my apartment. Panting, I locked twice and removed my suit's jacket and pants so fast I practically jumped out of them. I think pants in this case are referring to as trousers. All of my clothes went flying at my bed and even though I was in a hurry, I stopped to marvel at how messy and dirty the place where I lived was. Dust had turned to dust on the floor over the days, weeks and months. The walls were stained from leaky pipes. The dishes had been left untouched in the sink for weeks on end. Come on, man. Do some cleaning. The room's air was hot like lava and the only thing resembling air conditioning barely worked. Not even when I first rented the place. A fan of the ducks must have broke, and it always produced this distracting sound when it was on, but I couldn't be bothered to talk to the landlord to fix it. The only thing was that was pristine in perfect condition was my computer and its screens, turned on all day, every day. That's a bit of a leak in itself, having your computer always constantly on, with the sole exception being this rig. Someone must be wondering why I lived in such an apartment when at the same time I worked at a high profile company like Daikin Industries. A top class coder was always well paid. The truth was as simple as anyone's guess for financial reasons. Tri State was one of the most expensive places to live in on earth. Money was always tight. I really did yearn to live in a better place, more befitting for my income, but it was simply unfeasible. My salary was generous, but even so, most went towards helping with family. I wouldn't have it any other way. It was time to sit on the uncomfortable chair that I had to learn to be comfortable in and perform the exactly the exact same safety check while I've done on my work computer at the office. I didn't think at the time that anyone could have snuck into my apartment, but I did it anyway. Hardware? Nothing suspicious. Software? Fine. For the first time today since I learned the belief, I could take a small breath and let go of some of the tension. There was nothing more I could do for the situation at work at the present moment. It was time to check on my emails. Sky mail. So if it was more or less as I'd left it. Mike had sent an email about work, which I could reply to if I wanted. A couple of days ago, I cleaned up my inbox, deleting hundreds of unread and read emails. I regretted deleting them, though, since it is my written history one way or another. On the upside, the empty inbox looked somewhat like a clean slate for me, so that was refreshing. After glancing at my emails, it was time to start taking the planned precautions. I started transferring documents and files such as work logs, notes, and history of the encryption version of patches into two identical sticks. The first it was going to stay here in my home. I needed these files to be stored some place away from my computer. You never knew what could befall your machine, I guess. The second stick I was, I was to give to someone I trusted for safekeeping. I knew exactly who it was going to be. As the transferring progress, yeah, progress began, process began. I could lay back and relax, or try to. I didn't have much time to spend in my apartment. I had somewhere to be in a couple of hours. Hospital. I guessed it. The window was open, a gentle welcome summer breeze flowing to the room. The scent of chlorine and clean products was strong, perversive, and made my nostrils twitch. It wouldn't seem to go away even when the window opened wide, with a window open wide. Every inch of this place was thoroughly scrubbed clean, every day. The nurse had recognized and greeted me earlier. 
We had had a short talk and she let me through. I didn't see her in her bed somehow. A small Okay, somehow a small smile managed to find its way to my lips. Vivi! I called out. Are you hiding again? Hi! Vivi popped in front of me out of nowhere. She must have been hiding behind the door to surprise me. I had to encourage the naughty little games she liked to play. It was one of the few joys she had in this place. When she smiled, I smiled. Hey, I said, where were you hiding this time? That's a secret, big brother. She suddenly hugged me. I put my hand on her hood and held her head on my chest. It warmed my heart to see her still smiling, still lively. I let go of a hug. Are you feeling fine? I'm okay. Leg is better. I take the injections now. Ew. But the pain's better, right? I ask. Yep, sure is. I felt a weight being lifted off my chest. My sister had been afflicted by chronic pain on her legs bones for years now. It was mild at first, but getting worse and worse every year, and always unrelenting. So, can't I go home? She knew she couldn't go home. This was something we both had to learn to live with. My sister had been trapped in a hospital room for years. She attended school classes through a monitor, her laptop, and could barely leave the hospital grounds because of the stiffness in her legs. It seemed like a miracle to me how, despite all that, she could stay positive, that she could still smile. She was even more positive than I was. I hated having to tell her no. I'm sorry, that's not possible yet, I managed to say. You still need your physiotherapy, and the doctors are always near you here, in case of emergency, or the symptoms progressing. It had started from the bones of her foot, and worked its way up to her kneecap, but it had stopped there for a good long while. Physiotherapy had only stalled the pain, and the injections were just a local anesthetic, means to manage the problem, and not cure it, in other words. She seemed dejected only momentarily. She probably already knew the truth from the nurse. That's all right, she said. She understood. I covered my mouth, looked out the window, a heavy knot weighed down on my throat, and my eyes burned. I hope she wouldn't notice. <laughs> Funny how she's a stronger one, I thought, looking at her smile. That's why I had to do my best at work. I had to provide Vivian with everything she could conceivably need. I had to find every possible way to make her life more bearable. She filled my life with meaning. As if she was reading my thoughts, she said, How's work going? It's good. I said plainly, avoiding her eyes. Why can't you ever tell me more about it? Because it's highly confidential stuff. What's there to tell? I go in, type some stuff on the computer and I get out. I mean, you're not technically lying, but you're not talking about the, the depths and the intricacies of the work itself. But that is definitely what you would call a breach in data. I didn't wish... What if it's a sister that... I'm hiding out here. I didn't wish to talk about work with my sister, especially after recent happenings. There was absolutely no reason to worry her about with any of my problems. Aww, she said. Just wanted to hear a bit more about my genius bro. <laughs> uh, really, there's not much to it. Speaking of work. Hey, listen. Could you do something for me? Of course, anything. What is it? I took the stick with my work files out of my project pocket and gave it to her. I wouldn't do this! This was a bad idea! What's this? Some of my work files. Just hold on to them. Oh? May I look inside? Be my guest. You won't understand a thing, though. Don't underestimate me! She teased me as I laughed. <laughs> I'll have you working beside me in a few years, I said half jokingly, half filled with hope. My sister's movement may be impaired, but I could teach her how to code. She could find a job to busy herself with, with even an environment such as a hospital. But I didn't really want to burden her with all that when her leg pain was prevalent. Perhaps some time in the future. Alright. I said with somewhat renewed vigor. Time I was going. <laughs> Aww, Vivi said, can't you stay a bit longer? It's getting late and I have some work to do. As apologetically, on the weekend, maybe I'll have more time. I promise to stay longer then. Okay. See ya. Be well. I'll get the nurse to get you some ice cream. Yay! Love you, bro. My visit to my sister had eased my mind just a tiny bit. I wouldn't have put it 
uh, I wouldn't have given the, um, the second stick to the sister though at the hospital. Like, that in itself could be a massive data breach compromise if somebody were to visit in there knowing that um, she is your sister and therefore that person could possibly snoop around and pretend to be Vevi's friend or something like that. Like, he, the hacker could look up, um, what's its name now, Ian's, like, family, know about, like, the history of the family, and know that Vivi is hospitalized at this point in time, and therefore visit there, just in case Ian trusts her sis his sister, sorry, to be able to look after a, um, an important document, if they have the brains to know that that could be a possibility. Hmm. Thoughts of those troubles returned the very moment I stepped into my apartment. Oh, okay, okay. We can see these updates. Okay, got a bunch of numbers here. Subject. Cool, cool. Uh, new tube email confirmation. Dear Meme Chief 5 to you just confirmed your email address on your account on YouTube. We wish you happy video browsing hundreds of different and unique topics that can be found on our site. Right, Source Bucket. Hello, Ian. You just subscribed to Penny Mice's open source project, Zane Hold Firewall. Be sure to check out other source projects on sourcebucket.com. Here are some projects related to the Zinehorn Firewall for you to see. This is an automated response. Please do not respond to me soon. Now. Okay. Um. You're giving this email because you're subscribed to the Zion Home Firewall Project on Source Bucket. Hmm. More stuff on that. 126 fixes, 7 minor bugs, 3 critical exploits, and the introduction of a new security flow discussed in patch 114. Okay. Canted. Dear Meme Chief, your profile and canted was links to this email you will be receiving. Emails about updates on all anonymous conversations you are subscribed to on our app from now on. Remember, you're absolutely anonymous on our app and your free speech is protected. There's always a means to trace back to its owner. Let's see, Zinehorn update needs your attention. Okay, okay. Hey Ian, Zinehorn's Firewall's new update patches three critical unreleased exploits. Need to patch the exploits in our own code framework. Take a look at regards, Mike. Um, yeah, I know. I'll watch that project too. I'll work on it. Yay! Okay, so... We can look at these sort of stuff. Sweet dream. Did you see the new anime, Angels Don't Die? The main character is so cute to be honest, but the dub made different TV sucks. Anyway, sweet dreams, bro. No, I didn't see that yet. I don't have time to keep up with anime these days. I'll check it out when I can, though. Sweet dreams to you too. Are you not going to put a heart as well? Oh, that's, that's bad. What a bad bro you is. Right, we've done that. So, I feel like somehow... Looking at this email system is going to be pivotal towards what kind of ending that we get when the full game is released. Let's see. It was late at night and I felt distressed and sick. I should have just gone to bed straight away, but I couldn't help it. The leaker, I thought, staring at my computer screen. There's somewhere out there. The person who did this is somewhere out there. The same urge I had at work to open the churnip browser and search for material resurfaced. Before I could resist it, I had a new thought. What if I could find out who it was that posted the leaks in the dark web? If it was posted on some forums, I'd look up the user and see what I could find. It was perfectly justified in a sense. I convinced myself this was a good enough reason to look for the leaks. And I did. Okay, something else that's just occurred is that the email itself has a certain amount of word frame that you could look at the email for before looking at emails is very closed off. It's not word frame, but the, a certain amount of sentences transpires by and then you can't look at the emails anymore. And that could be a difference within the ending itself. For the next hour or so, I combed the sites I knew of in the dark web for signs of the Daikin Industries leak. Forums, databases, Fivenet, and other anonymous boards. 
I searched it all, skimming through dozens of topics and threads. Nothing was to be found. Not even a word of a Daikin Industries product. Like it hadn't happened at all. You need to be deeper than this. My boss had said his clients did their best to wipe any traces of the leak off the internet. Or perhaps I came across the leak and just didn't recognize it. Leaks of such kind weren't unheard of in the dark web. But if it was just the product without any of our encryption, how would I even know? I had no idea what the product was to begin with. It seemed like my search was doomed from the start. I won't find any leads this way. I reflected inside and got up from my chair. As I prepared to go to bed, I found myself wondering to what kind of people the clients of my boss were. Hmm. My first thought of the day when I woke up was quitting my job. Maybe it would be easier. The mess may have been too great to resolve anyway. I groaned as I got out of bed and started putting on my clothes. Question is a huge risk. Yeah, it is, because it'll make you more liable, I thought. There's a chance I won't find another job in time to pay my take, pay the bill, sorry. Not to mention no company in their right mind would hire me, but would make sure of that if I ditched him. I fixed my tie hastily, had a shot of coffee at home, and ran out the door. Besides, I had a personal stake in this. I was in charge of security, security that was compromised. I had to find out who it was and how it happened. Many of the people in the office had brought their coats and umbrellas with them. At, so as last night's forecast warned of rain. I glanced at everyone around me as I walked towards the coffee machine we had on the counter. Today seemed like a different day. Everyone was on edge. Aha. As I turned on the machine for my customary second coffee of the day, I overheard some fellow coders talking about the new happenings. Voices all hush and secretive that caught my attention. Then there was a jazzer, Ombre, Ard and Bray nearby. He was talking on the phone, so I focused my eyes on the machine that was making my coffee and pretended to mind my own business. Let him come live in Sharpton, I heard uh, and Andre said in his foreign accent. Down is n downtown is no place for him. Downtown, the cesspit of Tri-State, a side of a city where sin and violence reign supreme. I had no love for that place, in fact I avoided it where I could, as did any sensible citizen. Yes, things have changed now. This I promise, Andre said. I couldn't catch the rest of the conversation as more and more people walked in, waiting their turn behind me on the coffee machine. Once my coffee was ready I started heading for the cubicles, but I stopped by the very man I was listening in on a few seconds ago. Ah, hello. Good morning, I croaks. You stay in office until late sometimes. Do you stay tonight? It was true, but I did stay late sometimes, and usually Andre was the only person I ever saw in the building at these hours. Why are you asking? I inquired. I guessed Andre was a bit uncomfortable, but he didn't show it. You know that security was compromised, he asked me. Hmm, how did you know this? The jazz of all people, I thought. If he knows, everybody knows. He smiled and said, There's no secret. I ask because I want no trouble, so I want you to stay overtime together. <laughs> Word must have gotten out of our stuff. If stuff was posted online, I flitted nothing my boss nor I could do about it. That. I was thinking this at the same time I was trying to understand what Andre was saying. After a few moments, I said, You want me to stay with you so you don't remain alone in, this, in the building? Yes, he said. Still smiling, polite, yes. And Andre was one of the people that had keys to the building. Often he was the first one to arrive to, yeah, to arrive to open the doors in the morning. Often he was the last to leave, locking them at night. No problem, I said. I'll stay late tonight. Talk to you later. Okay, thank you, Ian. As soon as I turned to head for my desk, I started to process of new information. Things have changed. That's what I heard him say on the phone. And now he wants to do overtime only with me? To cover his rear? If he had a hand in the leak, would he not have quit the job already? No, because that would make you suspicious if he quit the job if you did leak it. Because then people would be looking at you as to like, why did you leave? Are you the potential leaker? But, yeah, wouldn't that be suspicious? He'd be hounded by Daikin, so instead of quitting, he just lay low and cover his tracks like he does now. Yes, that's a smarter thing to do. 
Andre had a certain quality about him that distinguished him from other janitors I had seen. Sweeping floors, polishing door handles, and clean air vents was his job. It was a job that anyone could do, yet he did it with an expertise and vigor that stood out in an odd way to me. I'll have to keep an eye on him. It was raining steadily outside, even though the sky was not cloudy. I began walking to my cubicle, one hand in my pocket, the other carrying my coffee and briefcase. How can you carry both with one hand at the same time, for goodness sakes? I always felt uncomfortable just having the coffee in the mug in my hands, for goodness sakes. Passing by Mike's desk, I saw him hunch over his keyboard, eyes glued on screen. So tired of these fake influencers on live view. We get it. You have 200 followers. What? Ian? You didn't hear what I just said. <laughs> Never mind. Why didn't you tell me anything? knows about the leak i quite to keep in my core yeah there are rumors i know i lowered my voice so only he could hear me i didn't tell you because boss told me not to tell anybody had no choice it's delicate you understand when you put it like that he murmured i thought he sounded somewhat nervous it's like he wanted to say something else on the subject but never got the chance as ken popped out of nowhere you all heard? The company's product was leaked online. Yeah, you bet we heard. Everyone and their mother knows by now. I wouldn't be surprised if Daikin's laughing stock by now. Uh, don't count on it. Posts of the leak got taken down pretty quickly. Not many people other than us are kept are up to speed about what's hap what's up, sorry. Still, Daikin's stock dropped by eleven percent last night. That's a pretty deep dip. Rough dip. How the hell did this happen? We're, what, 40 people working on this damn encryption, we still get hacked. Got hacked. I shrugged, wishing Ken would keep his voice down. I kind of hoped he wasn't smart enough to figure that out. Since we worked on a closed circuit, Malik was most certainly one of us. It could even be him, and he was playing dumb now to throw us off. Either way, it was only a matter of time until the people in the office wised up and realized that Malik was among us. It's kind of like a Monos game, really. Like, there's always somebody who's going to be an imposter among the ship. And this ship has yet to be taken off. My father knows about this. We even find out who hacked us. Oh, we ever found out who hacked us. Our firm is going to sue them out of existence. I sure like to see that. I mumbled as Ken began to walk away. Anyway, gotta go, Mike said. Have to see what we can do to contain this dumpster fire. Yep. When I returned back to my office desk, I resolved to put my coding work aside and do some digging around. Nobody was looking at me, but people of the office were busy with their work, or just slacking off, chatting with each other idly. Fine by me. The realization that everyone in this office was a potential subject hit me slowly, everyone without exceptions. Mm-hmm. Although, I'm just going to say this right now, if that is your desk, then people walking on the right-hand side could potentially see what you're up to, so therefore that in itself is kind of a data breach. Michael is one of the prime suspects. He was without a doubt one of the, our best coders, if not the best. In the job interview with Daikon that he got hired, <laughs> he hacked a company, he did it once, why not do it again? He did appear to want to douse the flames. Perhaps it wasn't him after all. The information about him that I currently possessed was insignificant for me to make a fair call. Well, all this speculation wouldn't do much help. It was time to take action. With a rather heavy heart, I decided it was time to hack Mike. <laughs> what? His full name is Mike Millen. Mylan. Born 16th of July 1991. He's been using his YouTube account for years now to make comments and videos. He likes to get into arguments on the internet, it seems. One may call him a keyboard warrior, even. He views songs and video clips from anime and similar media daily. He likes both popular shows that everybody knows of and rare ones that I've never heard of before. This is, so far, what I've come to learn about him through his work email, for which I had the password already. You're a sly little one, aren't you? I'm willing to bet he's Nutaku. Let's just say that I know a thing or two about anime as well, so I'm able to spot Nutaku in the wild. Moving on. He went to the Farborough College of Digital Engineering. Invite only. Top-notch education I've filled in general. 
in one of the better suburbs of the city. The college yearbook shows a Mike that has more pimples and longer hair than the present day Mike. I had to admit it. It was funny seeing what he looks like back in his college days. It must have been the quiet frat bro that skipped all parties to study. If there were any parties in a college where everyone's had a coat to begin with. Oddly, I found myself related to it because of those photos. It was now harder for me to see him in a negative light. To figure out if he was an only child, I did some digging through all of the city's college records for the same year Mike went in and also for the five years before and after he was done with his, with his education. Now, that might seem like going too far with the detective work, but that didn't even nearly reach the full extent of what I was determined to go to in order to get some answers. Well, it was a total waste of time anyway. The name Miller, so the name Miller never came up again on the search. It is likely he really is an only child. Running his name on Google search, I discover he doesn't really use any social media aside from YouTube, or so it seems. So there is no more source of information about him that I could find. Thought he may have been using into so live review since he mentioned it earlier, but no luck. He wasn't the type to plaster selfies on his wall profile wall all day long anyway, so he had no business in a site like that. I'm going to dig deeper online and see what I find. His work email's password doesn't work on his YouTube account, nor on his source bucket account. Obviously, he's using different passwords for all these different accounts. I wouldn't expect less from someone who went to the kind of college he did. Looks like a dead end. This is going to get spicy from here on out, because I'm going to try and brute force his password. Usually brute forcing means I have to try and guess what password someone may be using by combining keywords and numbers like the person's date of birth, favourite pet, childhood friend and all that. Or using such information to currently answer a security question when trying to recover an account's password. Truly the oldest trick in the golden book of hacking. But I have a tool that does the lock picking for me. What I have to do is dump the keywords into it and wait. I waited for half an hour and the program is still running. Computing advanced combination of letters and numbers. The password results become increasingly complicated and all inputs were rejected, one after the other. I was missing vital keywords. I still do not know the names of his pet, if he ever had one, his family or friends, or he was one of those people that use a completely random string of letters, words and numbers for passwords. A hallmark of a careful, seasoned hacker indeed. Brute forcing was a failure for the time being, but it was worth a try. Damn, and now it's night time. The best thing to do now was to let the password cracking tool run in the background and move on to other things. More specifically, I required more keywords to go on. I had an idea. I got up from my desk and headed for the elevator. There was a way to find out more precious keywords. In fact, it was possible for me to find out entire passwords Mike was using right away. I had to gain control of Mike's computer. Through the server room console on the 22nd floor, I had access to all the PCs in the building and their operation logs. Being the master of the server sure has advantages. This is how I got the password of his work email in the first place. Bloody hell. If Mike had ever signed into his personal email, the action would be catalogued, so catalogued and his password would be in full view. Damn, looking through these records took time. So I never pried on other computers for too long, as the console's logs were being watched by the higher echelons of the company, so to speak. Speaking of the higher echelons of the company... Hello there! Hope from the accountant's department entered the elevator and stared me down with an inquisitive gaze. She seemed like a delicate woman, judging by how well she was taking care of her appearance, her nails in particular, which weren't fake. I knew her to be meticulous in her job from the times I had to interact with her. Perhaps overly so, since she fussed about details that were no concern to me. The most recent example being which place was the correct place to leave your umbrella after entering the office. The right place for employees to put their umbrellas was in the was the lobby, near the secretary's counter, right next to a big sign that read Dykin Industries. Well my umbrella was special, and it's right under <laughs> and its right place was under my desk. I wasn't certain why. But the theme that always stood out to me about her was the tattoo on her hand. Yeah, it looks like the logo of the game, doesn't it now, uh, Netgoes? A red heart caught in the middle of a spider's web. 
It was such a glaring contradiction with her usual rigid and professional persona. I could never imagine the hope I personally knew ever getting this tattoo, any tattoo of that matter. People who get that kind of tattoo often don't stop at one. And now I found myself wondering what other tattoos she had. As soon as she entered, she, pulled, she pressed a button for her floor, got the phone that was never far from her out of pocket and started fiddling with it. Her long, well-groomed red nails clicked on the screen as she tapped it deftly. You're not going to the server room, are you? She asked courtly without raising her eyebrows from her phone screen. I didn't even press the button yet, and she knew? The door was closed and the elevator began its ascent. I am, I said. I s <laughs> I'm certain I sounded more weary than I would. Don't bother, she said. It's in lockdown. Hmm. Mm, they usually warned me about those things beforehand. Lockdown? How come I didn't know anything about any lockdown? That truly is a mystery, she said snidely. I signed and pressed a button from the 14th floor where my office was. Several times, like the elevator would take me back faster if I did. Lockdown? What for even? I mumbled, making it my irritation obvious. She put her phone away to, <laughs> to, to look at me. The leak got management worried. Bora is looking over every archive right now. So he's already doing what I was going to do there to, go there to do. Neat. I said somewhat serious. S serious somewhat flip. I can't read words today. Mostly flippant. Hmm. Hope threw me a smirk as she stepped out of the elevator on the top floor. And with that, she was off to her business. I had no choice but to head back to my desk. The trip to the server room had, would have to wait. Maybe she's putting a facade there. As night fell, so did science in the office. One by one, employees from the 14th floor left for home, finished for the day. One by one, the lights in every cubicle were put out. Every cubicle but mine. I had my face buried in my arms for a long time. When I finally raised my head, it was like I just woke up from a deep slumber. I could barely remember what I had been doing, or been working on for the past few hours. The logs, right? I remembered now. I spent the evening reviewing logs of activity from months back of anything suspicious. In vain, while waiting for my password cracking tool to untie the knot of Mike's password. Bird left the building hours ago, leaving the server room in lockdown. Still nothing I could do on that front. I made my way to the bottom of the fourth cup of coffee for the day and toiled despite my anxiety and fears. As I worked in science, Andre appeared out of nowhere and nearly scared me off my chair. <laughs> Hello! Damn! I leaned forward slightly to cover my computer screen as discreet as I could, but he was not looking at my screen anyway. Not that he'd see anything but my open browser. Hey, Andre! I choked. How is your work today? Good? The lockpick program still operated in the background. So and so, I replied in truth. It was a day full of fruitless, thankless work. I'll be going home soon. Are you done around here? Not yet. I work overtime for Mr. Buller. I gave him a tired smile. Mouse to feed? My nephew, Ignacy, and his mother. I do best I can. I nodded in understanding. I have family to take care of too, so I know what it's like. Family? Andre said. Yeah, my sister Vivi, of course. She's sick, so I've to provide for her as much as I can. I won't share any of this under normal circumstances. Not it was a secret around the office, but it was just too personal for me to make conversation with, and it wasn't accustomed to talk about unpleasant things like that. And yet I felt genuine sympathy for the man before me. So it just came out. You do best you can, he said. I hope she becomes well. Some gladness found its way into my heart, I smiled at him. Thanks. I reached over my desk to one of those little stacked cards with my number that I had and gave it to him. Listen, Andre. If you ever need someone to fix you or your computer's new com nephew's computer, just call me. I'm the man for the job. He took the card off and glanced at it very briefly. I am not so much on the computer. Ignacy, maybe. Sure, I said. You know, this is how I scraped by since early school, early high school. I must have fixed hundreds of PCs by now. I chuckled. I'm no good with that. Okay, I'll call you if there is problem. All right then, I said, getting up from my chair. I'll be off for the night. You go now. I can't go yet. Can you stay a little longer? I really can't, I said, as apologetic as I could. With one hand, I took my coat off the rag behind me, and with the other, I shut down my work PC and all the programs running there. I've been at it since 8 in the morning. Okay, good night. 
I closed shut my suitcase and grabbed my umbrella from beneath my desk. Have a good one. Hmm, okay, folks. I think this is where we're going to end off the uh, playthrough of the demo of this game. It's really intriguing to see what the story is about. Kind of like um, Steins Gate in a way where it's kind of had a very slow build up, but then at some point it explodes and it just comes at you at full force. And I think in a way this game is kind of inspired by it not the theming of it but by the characters and the kind of interactivities that are going on which will give you a psychological effect similar to those that would happen in Steins Gate but I'm not saying it's a carbon copy of it most definitely not I'm saying there's inspiration from it but this is a very good little demo of the game and I suggest you check out the game for yourselves as well to see what you can find but also as well check out this game's Kickstarter which I'll also have in the description below but thank you all so much for watching, guys, and see you all in the next video. Have a good day and take care of yourselves.